Hello, this is Mrs. Ward, and I'm going to go over the 6.4a classwork, and this is for vectors and dot product. So the first one is uh, finding the dot product between u and v. So to find the dot product, you're going to take the a's. So I'm going to take 6 times 2, and I'm going to add it to 3 times negative 4. So I'm multiplying the a's or the x's, and then I'm multiplying the b's or the y's. 12 plus negative 12, and when I add that, I get 0. When I do the dot product between two vectors, remember it ends up being a scalar, which means one number, and is not another vector. It ends up being a scalar. So here, doing number 3, same process. I'm going to take 5 times 3, plus remember these coefficients are understood to be 1, 1 times negative 1. If you're wondering where I got those, the coefficients are going to be my a and my b. So I'm going to have 15 plus a negative 1, and my final answer is going to be 14. So the next one, uh, we're doing more, so we may end up with a vector or a scalar. So I just like doing the problem first to see what I end up with, and then I decide whether it's a scalar or a vector. So um, number 7, I have u dot 2v, so I'm finding the dot product between u. u is 2, 2. And then dot 2v, and v is negative 3, 4. So this will be 2, 2 dot negative 6, 8. So now I'm going to take 2 times negative 6 plus 2 times 8. So I'm going to have negative 12 plus 16. And my final answer is 4, and that's going to be a scalar because it's just one number. Number nine, remember order of uh, operations still applies, so I'm going to do what's inside the parentheses first. So I'm going to have 3w dot v, which is negative 3, 4. And then outside the parentheses, I am going to have u, which is 2, 2. So distributing the 3, I'm going to have 3, negative 12 negative 3, 4, and then that 2, 2 is still outside. So now I'm going to take 3 times negative 3 plus negative 12 times 4. So that's going to be negative 9 minus 48. So that will end up being negative 57. And then 2, 2, so I'm going to end up with negative 114. Remember, I'm distributing this to both A and the B, negative 114. So I, I did end up with a vector. Next one, use the dot product to find the magnitude. So remember, in your notes, you learned to find the magnitude. You're going to do, so to find the magnitude of U, that's going to be u dot u. So you're going to find the dot product among itself. So I'm going to do, so I'm going to do 20, 25, oh, square root, um, times 20, 25. And taking the square root, so I'm going to end up with dot product 20 times 20 plus 25 times 25, which looks the same thing as 20 squared plus 25 squared. So I'm going to end up with 400 plus 625, which will be 1,025. That separates to 25 times 41. So 5 times the square root of 41. The next one, I am going to find the magnitude of u, which is equal to negative 4j. So remember, there is no i. So the component form will be 0, negative 4. So the magnitude of u is going to equal the square root of 0, negative 4, dot 0, negative 4. So that's going to be 0 times 0 plus negative 4 times negative 4. 0 plus 16, square root of 16, which will just be 4. So the magnitude of u 
is equal to 4. And this is the magnitude of u as well. Okay, moving on. Next page. Um, find the angle between the vectors. So this one you have the formula. The both will be on your formula sheet. So I'm going to do the cosine of theta is equal to the dot product of u times v. So I'm going to say negative 1, 0, dot, 0, 2, all over the magnitude of u. So negative 1 squared plus 0 squared times the magnitude of v, which is 0 squared plus 2 squared. So I'm going to have 0, negative 1 times 0, negative 1 times 0 plus 0 times 2 over the square root of 1 times the square root of 4. So I'm going to have 0 over, square root of 1 is 1, 1 times the square root of 4, oh, square root of 4 is 2, whoopsie. I could just write 0 over 2, which will just be 0. I'm either going to put that in my calculator or I'm going to remember from trig that the cosine is equal to 0 at 90 degrees. So I'm going to do 90 degrees. If I wasn't sure, I'd do the inverse cosine of 0 and uh, put that in my calculator, change it to degrees, and you should get 90 degrees. The next one I am going to put into my calculator, um, cosine of theta, doing the dot product, so 3 times negative 2 plus 4 times 3 over the magnitude of u, so the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared times the magnitude of v, so negative 2 squared plus 3 squared. So this is going to be, that's negative 6 plus 12, so the numerator will be 6. The square root of 3 plus the square root of 4 is the square root of 25, so that's just 5 times the square root of, and that'll be 13. I'm going to leave it like that. I'm not going to try and simplify any further. I'm looking for the angle, so I'm going to say theta is equal to the inverse cosine of 6 over 5 times the square root of 13. I'm putting that in my calculator, changing it to degrees, and I get 70.56 degrees my unit circle values and know that the cosine of pi over 3 is going to be 1 half. The sine of pi over 3 is going to be the square root of 3 over 2. So this vector for the i and j in component form is just going to be 1 half square root of 3 over 2. Then this cosine of 3 pi over 4, well that's in the second quadrant, so the cosine is negative, so square root of 2 over 2. The sine will be a positive square root of 2 over 2. When I go to use that formula, I'm going to say the cosine theta is equal to the dot product. So I'm going to take 1 half times the negative square root of 2 over 2. And that's going to be a negative square root of 2 over 4. And then the square root of 3 times the square root of 2 will be the square root of 6. 2 times 2 is 4. That's all over the magnitude of the the magnitude of u. Well, the magnitude of u, since it's written in the form of cosine pi over 3, sine of pi over 3, that's going to be that 1 half squared plus the square root of 3 over 2 squared, which should equal 1 because cosine squared of anything plus sine squared of anything should equal 1. So this would just end up being 1 times 1, so my denominator is 1. So to find this, I'm going to say the cosine theta is equal to this negative square root of 2 plus 6, well, square root of 6, all over 4. I just combine them over the denominator. If you're not sure what I did to get these both 1, then you can, you're more than welcome to put in the denominator 1 half squared plus the square root of 3 over 2 squared, but that's just going to be 1. And the same thing's going to happen when you take the square root of 2 over 2 squared, negative, square root of 2 over 2 squared, that's also going to be 1. So I don't need that denominator. I just wanted to show you how I'm going to throw this in my calculator in case you have some questions with that. So I have my calculator on the calculating page, and I am going to do inverse cosine, so go into inverse cosine. So I don't make a mistake since I have those fractions. I'm going to hit control divide, so I keep my fractions nice and organized. So it's a negative square root of 2. Get out of that radical to create another radical, plus, remember, I cannot add them. They're not like terms, so they have to be separated. Square root of 6. 
and this is going to be all over 4. Hit enter, and this is in radians because my calculator is in radians. I'm going to go to the catalog. I'm already set up to do my degree decimal, but if I wasn't, let's say I was like up here in the A's. The quickest way to get down there is to press the D, and that will take you to the top of the D's, and then you're going to scroll down until you see that DD. Once I see that DD, I'm going to hit enter, and I get 75 degrees. The nice thing about this is the next time I push the catalog, I'm already going to be on my DD. Just thought that would help. So I get 75 degrees, which makes sense to me, and I'm hoping it makes sense to you, because if I remember trig, which I'm hoping you all do remember trig, pi over 3, pi over 3 is 60 degrees. 3 pi over 4 is 135 degrees. So if I find the difference between 135 degrees, because it has to be positive, minus 60 degrees, I do get 75 degrees. So if you recognize those angles, you didn't have to do any of that work. You could have just subtracted 135 minus 60. But that's only if you remember those angles. All right, the next one we are trying, it says graph the vectors and find the degree measure of the angle between them. So when I graph u, u component form is 2, 4. So rush sketch, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. That's going to be a vector that goes something like that, and that will be u. u will be blue. Then we'll make v red, so 3, negative 5. So 3, negative 5. And that's going to be a vector that looks like this. So without doing any work, I'm looking for this angle. So I'm looking for a small angle. I, I, I can see that it's going to be teeny tiny. So I'm going to say the cosine of theta is equal to the dot product of u and v. So 2 times 3, which is 6, plus negative 4 times negative 5, which is a positive 20. And that's all over the magnitude of u, so that's 2 squared plus negative 4 squared, times the magnitude of v, which is 3 squared plus negative 5 squared. So cosine of theta is equal to 26 over the square root of 1620 times 9, 25, 34, 34. And I'm probably not going to simplify any further than that because um, I don't want to make a mistake. So I'm just probably going to leave it like that. Get out my calculator. Go back to this. So I'm going to hit co inverse cosine. Um, doing my fractions button. So I'm going to say 26. And then I'm going to have it over the square root. And I could just do 20 times 34, or I could separate the radicals up to you because I can multiply radicals. I separated, just to show you what I did, and I get this, change it to degrees, and remember, I'm expecting a small degree based on my picture. And I get a small degree, I get something like 4.4 .4 degrees, which makes sense for the picture that I drew. So theta is equal to 4.4 .4 degrees. So that's the same thing, just the end of fun of drawing a picture. 31, it says find u dot v where theta, uh, where theta is the angle between. So it's telling me that the co, so going back to my formula, the cosine is equal to u dot v over the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v. So what they're running me to solve for is they're asking me to solve for this, u dot v. I'm not going to know what u is. I'm not going to know what v is. I'm just going to know what the dot product is. So that's the first thing that throw people out. I'm not going to find like an exact answer. I'm going to substitute in what I know. So the first thing I know is theta is uh, 3 pi over 4. So I'm going to say the cosine of 3 pi over 4 is equal to, well, u dot v is what I'm looking for. The magnitude of u is 9. The magnitude of v is 36, and I'm multiplying those two. So the cosine of 3 pi over 4 is a negative square root of 2 over 2 is equal to u dot v, and 9 times 36 is 324 
to solve for u dot v, I'm going to multiply this side by 324, which means I'm going to multiply this side by 324. The twos will simplify. I'll be left with a negative 162 times the square root of 2, and that's equal to u dot v. And I didn't simplify it any further. I guess you could find the decimal if you wanted to, but why not just leave it like that? All right, the next one. It says determine whether u and v are orthogonal, parallel, or neither. So I am going to do that. Remember, I'm going to find the dot product. So that's the first thing I do is I find the dot product. Because if the dot product is 0, I know they're orthogonal. If they, the dot product is not 0, then I look for something else. So when I do u dot v, I took negative 12 times 1 half plus 30 times negative 5 fourths. When I did that, I got negative 6 plus... Uh, 75, oh, negative 75 over 2. And when I do that, I get negative 87 over 2. So it's not equal to 0, so I know it's not orthogonal. So then the next thing I did is I looked at it, and I asked myself, well... They kind of look similar. I, I don't know how else to explain it. So then what I realized is if I take negative 12 and divide it by positive 1 half, I got negative 24. And if I took 30 and divide it by negative 5 fourths, I also got negative 24, which means that if I take this vector and multiply it by negative 24, I'm going to get this vector, which means if I, all I had to do was multiply it by something, that means they're going in the same direction. So if they're going in the same direction, that means they have to be parallel. The next one, 35, I'm going to do the dot product. So when I do that, I get, oh, I had distributed the 1 fourth first. So when I do that, I have 3 fourths, negative 1 fourth, and then this is 5, 6. Doing the dot product, I take 3 fourths, times 5 plus negative 1 fourth times 6. So this is 15 fourths minus 6 fourths. And I know I could have simplified, but I wanted to keep the common denominator. And I end up with 9 fourths. So it's neither. Then I could do the, that same thing that I just did. If I take 3 fourths and I divide it by 5, and I'm going to compare that to 1 fourth and divide it by 6 and see if I get the same thing. And I'm willing to bet that I don't just simply because of the signs, but I'm going to check that out. So when I do this one, I get uh, 3 twentieths. And when I do this one, I get a negative 1 24. So they don't match. They don't have the same. They're not equal to 0, so they are neither. And the last one I have, I have 37, so this is going to be 2, negative 2. V is going to be negative 1, negative 1. So when I do the dot product, I'm going to have 2 times negative 1 plus negative 2 times negative 1. So I get negative 2 plus 2, which is equal to 0. Since it's equal to 0, I'm going to say that they're orthogonal. And then the last one, it says, find the value of k so that the vectors u and v are orthogonal. So remember, in order for them to be orthogonal, the dot product has to equal 0. So this is 2, negative k, and this is 3, 2. So I'm going to take 2 times 3 plus negative k times 2, and I want that to equal 0. So 2 times 3 is 6, and I'm going to write this as minus 2k is equal to 0. Subtract 6 from both sides, k is equal to 3. So in order for it to work, k has to equal 3. And if k were equal to 3, then this would be 2, negative 3, and 3, 2. I'm just checking my work. So I'd have 2 times 3 plus negative 3 